Hey friends, it's me, Pastor Doug, with another word of encouragement for the day for today, Friday, January 15th. And today's word comes out of John chapter 12, verses 12 through 14. And in it, we continue our exploration of the the way that Jesus used his power in ways that seems paradoxical to us and would have been shocking and surprising to his contemporaries. So let me set the scene for what we're about to read. Jesus is preparing to enter the city of Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem at at this time was really the seat of power for this particular region. Uh, And throngs of people, thousands and thousands of people had flooded the city of Jerusalem from from all over the place, had made a pilgrimage to to, to come to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of, of the Passover in Jerusalem for this particular week. And so Jesus is entering into a very crowded city filled with people. In fact, listen to what John describes. He says, the next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And they got so excited, they took palm branches and they went out to meet him and they shouted things like, Hosanna, and, and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and blessed is the King of Israel. I mean, these people are going nuts, right? I mean, they've lined the streets, they're shouting and praising and singing and waving palm branches as he comes up, laying their cloaks down on the ground as he comes into the city of Jerusalem. It reminds me of that scene in Aladdin. Remember the scene where Aladdin comes into the city and you know there's elephants and camels in rich uh, purple clothing and uh, dancers and an entourage and there's just all this music going on like that's kind of what I picture in my mind you know Jesus riding into the city on this great stallion with elephants and camels and music and an entourage except that's not actually how he comes into the city yes there's a crowd of people cheering But his entourage is 12 scraggly disciples. And instead of an elephant or a camel or a great white stallion, he rides a donkey. Verse 14 actually tells us this. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. Where's the camel? Where's the elephant? Where's the music? Where's, Where's the entourage? Where's the dancers? See, for us, those are the kinds of symbols, status symbols that we expect from someone who is powerful, right? They've got a limo, they've got a, a nice car, they've got uh, you know big expensive rings on their fingers, they've got nice clothes, they live in a nice house. Whatever those symbols are, we sort of imagine that people with power and, and, and resource and money, you know, flaunt those things through their status symbols, but not Jesus. Jesus comes riding in on a donkey. See, Jesus wasn't about status symbols. He wasn't about accumulating wealth or uh, uh, popularity, right? Jesus was about rescuing humanity. And so for him, the status symbols didn't really matter. Friends, I wonder if you and I have bought into the lie that status symbols matter that we give special deference to people who drive really nice cars or have really nice houses, or we pursue those things because we think that those things speak of power. Jesus had all the power in the universe and yet he rode a donkey. So friends, if you drive a terrible little car, you know, that barely gets you from point A to point B, hey, you're in good company. Jesus came riding into the powerful city of Jerusalem, uh, riding, no, not a pinto, but but a colt, a, a donkey. Uh, Friends, this week, may you and I reevaluate our fascination with status symbols and power. And would we begin to see power the way that Jesus modeled power, that it was more about blessing and causing the flourishing and the redemption of other people than about building his own notoriety or flashing his status symbols. Think about that this weekend. Be sure to join us Sunday morning as we continue our series, and then we'll pick these videos back up on Monday. We'll see you then.